There's no time to waste. There's no time at all. Every picture tells a story. Sometimes we don't like the ending. Sometimes we don't understand it.
Gentlemen, welcome to the show! What a bizarre show. That's quite enough of that, I think. Enough preliminaries. Here's the performance you've been waiting for. Proves I'm without prejudice and have a fine sense of humour. Sword and crown are worthless here. I invite everyone to dance. Labourers, lawyers, church and gown all make their little prance. This life is full of random deaths and heaps of shame. So if you are soothed by action, you want someone to blame. I am plagued in strange disease, drowned, murdered, or if you please, a long fall down the basement stairs, none is expected, no one cares. I often must work very hard, sweat running down my skin. After the dance, I then must rest, and the eating can begin. Time to eat. Death is the ultimate equalizer. All have the right to be. Oh, sir. So to speak. What a thing. Feasting while Wonderland is destroyed. I'm not the enemy you seek, Alice. I tried to hide this bit of Wonderland from that beast. Appeasement's never clear. We must all play our assigned roles. Are you a pawn or queen? An idiot or a practiced fool? However, this turns out. Consider the prospect that you've been misled, Alice. Then ask by whom? No! Who set that bloody train in motion? Where is it coming from? It arrived when you arrived, and it's more horrible even than you could currently imagine. The death of the speed! Answer, Pella! Me know how! What? Oh, the blood in my mouth tastes like bile. Where's the brute that hit me, Nanny? Nasty prats out cold. Not dead and more's the pity. Oh, what did he want? What they all want. Money didn't earn. What were you thinking, button into that mess? You could have been killed. Nanny, my mind's in pieces. I still have terrible visions and I need to know. About the fire. Same as always. You need to move on, Alice. So do I. Well, at least she's not spewing that side of My past is dead, I killed them, I should have saved them, I should have died. But her mind was in shambles. Radcliffe thought familiar faces would bring her round. After a year, he lost interest in her inheritance, completely sod. Still, always asking his bizarre questions. Every dose of madness, I'd say, but honest is never the best policy in this life. When she wasn't comatose, she gave her toys like the Occasionally squeached. About a sensible sound. And like the child she was, she kept her secrets close. Gone off some lurkers, common as cockroaches. And those poor tykes are food for perverts, like the blameless ants that wasps consume or spiders feeble prey. You visited my room at Rutledge. What were you... Recall that. 
Radcliffe paid me for a bit. A woman alone sometimes does what she doesn't particularly feel like doing. As you know. Nurse Whitless said you'd fallen on hard times. I'm no drunk like her. I'm hurting no one. Booking's not a bad life. Except for the pimps. She also said you might have my rabbit. Please, Nanny, talk about the damn fire. Never seems to help. Look, Alice, I can't give you what I don't have. Radcliffe wrote the inquest report. I'll take you to him. Besides, he's got your damn rabbit. You should remember that. All right, but Mr. Radcliffe's useless. Don't I know it? Considering the nature of the goods on offer, it seems more than generous. Yes? Who is it? Alice Little, Mr. Radcliffe. Ah, oh, you're back. I suppose you better come up. Mind the latch. my rabbit. Forgotten your manners? And what else, I wonder? You abandoned it at Rutledge Asylum, my dear. We've been over this before. In a huff as usual, oozing with attitude and accusatory flummery, I've stolen her rabbit. Ridiculous pretext. She's here about the fire again. All the mad child wants to talk about. My report found her family dead by misadventure. She won't accept it goes on and on about her killing memories and her need to know the truth. The alleged truth is the fire began in the library when the cat knocked over a lamp. The blaze trapped her parents and sister upstairs. Sister Lizzie never even unlocked her door. Died in her bed. The guilty cat always sets her off. She denies it. Makes no sense. It can't be, etc. Agreed. From the outset, Alice was my candidate for the pyromania. The girl had a fixation with fire. I once remarked that I thought she might have had a larger role in causing the tragedy. Such some sort of psychotic episode. Did I rip his head off? I wanted to. What's left of my brain will explode. Is it mad to pray for better hallucinations? Perhaps I'm fated to expire right here.
Gwyn. It's corrupting all of Wonderland. Seeking refuge from the wicked world? Perhaps things only look like they've gone to hell. You're not that good a liar, and I'm not that stupid. But something a bit less calamitous would have been welcome. This unmitigated disaster is your doing, and it will get worse. Your train keeps a hellish schedule. Get moving. Time waits for no one. The change has begun. The train is perfectly capable of terrifying me, Cat. You should find another job. Is there really so little hope? There's even less, and if fear paralyzes you, we are lost. of a thousand miles begins with a single step. A single step off London Bridge could end my journey. Failure is your epitaph. I'd hoped you were more courageous. Vaporous ledge only appears as flimsy and insubstantial as your confidence. It will hold you, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> 